What up guys, wanna play Pruha here and today I'm back with another video. And today's video is gonna be something more fun so you guys can try out some new movies. I am doing the top five zombie movies in my opinion. So if these do not float your boat, then um, then they don't float your boat. But these are my favorite in my opinion and I figured I'd share them because some of you that watch me may have similar interests and you may not have seen these movies. So why not share them? If you guys don't have anything to do and you wanna check something out that's new that you haven't uh, thought about checking out, then try these movies out. Well, since there's five, I'm gonna start from five and work my way up to number one. Just like in my previous videos, if you not have seen like my top five anime, top five witchy movies, etc., etc., I work from five to number one because that's just the way I like to do it because that's just the way I like to do it, okay? Don't question my methods. This is me. If you don't like me, then get out of here. Number five is actually an older movie. I believe it was released in the 90s or possibly early 2000s. Don't quote me on it, but I mean, if you Google 28 days later, then you'll know. Some of you may have seen this because I think my general audience is roughly around my age, if not a little bit younger or a little bit older. So you guys may have seen this. This is one of my favorite movies. It's one of the most realistic zombie movies in my opinion, as realistic as you can get with a zombie movie. But let's be real. I mean, we're technically going through a pandemic right now. It's my opinion, a really bad case of the flu. But some people will beg to differ. And yes, I have done my own research. I have looked at all the symptoms and the strands and I dove into it and I have looked into it and it's, that's just how I feel about it. This, on the other hand, if this actually happened, we would actually have a fucking problem compared to the COVID. Moving on from that touchy subject, I feel like the COVID's been pretty much turned into like a touchy, like Christianity subject now. So I'm gonna stop talking about it like it's a fucking religion. The COVID's a religion now. Oh, holy fuck. 28 days later, if you have not seen it, it starts off with um, animal activists. Believe me, I love my animals. I would like to free all animals from torment as much as anyone else who is an animal activist. But I know logically that there's repercussions in following those actions. So within this movie, there are some animal activists and they break into a center where they are, of course, testing things on animals. These animals that were locked up that these animal activists freed end up being infected with the rage virus. That rage virus, when passed on to another human being, has, was not thoroughly tested yet. It was just injected into the animal and you know that they uh, take time lapses of the animals to see how they will react and they place it into different species and whatnot, yada, yada, yada. I think hopefully most of you guys know how this sort of like testing process goes. They usually wait to see any sort of symptoms that record it and they place different strains of the same sort of virus but modified in certain ways to see how the animal reacts. Animal activists just trying to, you know, they just didn't like the fact that the, the, creator, the creatures that they loved that were innocent were getting tested on. They wanted to free them all, so they were letting all of them out. And they did not realize that they were infected with these viruses at the time. So this is the part where I would have to say I wouldn't do that because they literally broke into a lab where they knew that these viruses were, they were testing these virus, you know, medicines and viruses on these animals. So you would have to sadly think about the benefit of humanity is you're not gonna be able to save those ones because you can possibly create more damage than, than good at this point in time. It, it's already, it's too late for them in that sense. The only thing you can focus on right now is making sure no others can get taken to that lab or you, you're not infecting your own kind at the same time, you know, something like that. Hopefully that made sense. So after this happens, the virus ends up spreading rapidly and the main character's name is Jim. He wakes up in the middle of a uh, in a hospital that has been, been basically torn to shreds. And he has no idea what's going on. Everything is in shambles. He wanders out of his room, 
And if you guys have seen Walking Dead, it's similar to, the, to that experience when he wakes up and there's like nobody around, but the hospital is like completely torn to shit. So he starts walking around. I don't know exactly how long he was asleep. Uh, he was like in a coma. He wakes up, he's thirsty, he's hungry, he grabs some beverages, there's nothing around. Nobody, no one, no zombies, no nothing. So he wanders outside and he slowly starts realizing as he sees like bulletins plastered everywhere that something happened and he was basically asleep for the whole fucking thing. That's a rude awakening right there. As he tries to wander around and figure out what to do, he's not the smartest about his approach in um, trying to figure out his surroundings. He was kind of loud about it and attracted the wrong attention, if you get what I mean. Luckily, a group of people came to his rescue and recruited him into their team and to their area of which they were taking shelter. And he develops a bond with these people and they venture out to find a safe zone pretty much per usual for a lot of zombie movies, which is something that I don't usually really care for because, oh, let's face it, in real life, there's not going to be a safe zone. If there is a virus like that, you are screwed. You're, it is literally the survival of the fittest at that point, and you're going to have to take care of yourself. If you find people, cool, and you can trust them, even better. But there's only so much you're going to be able to do until you know that you've wiped the threat out completely. As he travels on with these people, he ends up finding someone else who is like barricaded in an apartment and they end up recruiting them eventually and they eventually hear a broadcast on a radio that says that there is a safe zone. There's no such thing as a safe zone, honey. They pursue this safe zone and it's ran by military personnel and these military personnel are not exactly the best personnel to be around they're a little twisted in the head and they don't really care about your own safety so some things unravel there and this shit hits the fan and i'm not gonna spoil the rest it's a really good movie there's a lot of things that keep you intrigued the whole fucking time and it's an older movie, it's like in the 90s. I'm pretty freaking sure it's like in the 90s. 90s or early 2000s, because that's when I watched it. When I watched it, I was in my teens. So, so yeah. Fuck, man, that made me feel really old. Like, damn. <laughs> what the hell happened? But yeah, anyways, that's, that's the gist of it without spoiling every fucking detail, because when you guys have complained about that before, and I'm like, if you want a brief summary, this is as brief as I get without trying to, like, destroy every detail of it. So if you don't like these, don't watch them. Alright. Alright, so that's number five. Going on with my spiel of 28 days later, I have, of course, for number four, I have 28 weeks later. 28 weeks later is, starts out as roughly six months later of, you know, 28 days later of the initial virus outbreaking. The rage virus has basically wiped out most of humanity. British Isles. The US Army declares that the danger has passed. Really though, has it? They always say this shit. Slowly they're trying to restore order and make sure everything falls into place of just going back to normal, you know, they're trying to normalize everything for everyone's peace of mind sort of deal, even though shit's still hitting the fan in a 360 motion. A brother and a sister travel to reunite with their father who is in a quarantined camp that is slowly trying to regulate normalization. They have a routine, a regime to decipher who's infected and who's not, so who can enter the camp and who cannot enter the camp sort of thing. So they are taking these protective measures to make sure that you're safe to be allowed in there so you don't infect anyone else. Little does everyone know that someone that is in the camp can actually hold the virus within themselves, not showing any signs. They're a carrier and they do not know this. Slowly, the virus spreads throughout this camp and takes over and everyone has to evacuate once again. Of course, more 
drama is going to follow as this happens and this one is really really thrilling compared to the first one. The first one was very very slowly unraveling. The second movie unravels pretty fast and some hidden gems <laughs> like rear their heads within this one here that they didn't show in the first one because you'll see some things that happen in the first one you're gonna be like really are you kidding me what the heck happened to this person you'll see this one definitely keeps you like hanging on to the edge of your seat sort of vibe because there is a lot of action there's a lot of running <laughs> a lot of running from the infected and the infection spreads so fast so by the time it happens you're, you're you realize you were just hanging on to your seat for a good like half an hour for this movie check out 28 weeks later it's a really good watch i would suggest watching 28 days later first and then watching 28 weeks later because you know the appropriate sequence is always nice to like line those things up so you don't like miss anything that has happened in the first one so moving on to number three three is dawn of the dead anna is the main character in this movie and her husband ends up becoming infected by the neighbor. She barely manages to escape by the time he turns. It was it was a brutal attack, let me tell you what, especially if you're like, nah, my partner would never turn against me, blah, 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 they, don't, they, have, they always have my back. You wait until they're infected by some sort of virus, they may, they may not have your back. They probably won't even know who the fuck you are anymore, just like what happened to this bitch. Once she actually escapes her husband and runs outside, she ends up realizing that the whole neighborhood is pretty much having the same problem and there is an outbreak. Eventually, as she adventures on, she finds some people and she accumulates a group. They end up running off together, fighting as a unit, which is nice. I mean, that's really nice off the get-go to find a group of people that you can like fight together as a unit. I mean, that's probably gonna be rare in real life. I feel like most people will be out to just everyone to each their own then <laughs> why would they help you what what can you provide them that's gonna keep you safe you know eventually they end up reaching a mall that was closed for some reason i haven't watched this in a long time i remember watching this when i was in my teens <laughs> like the other few movies like i was telling you guys about i ended up watching 28 days later and 28 weeks later like not that long ago actually so that gave me like a, a pretty good like refresher of what was going on I don't know the dead I have I don't own it and I couldn't find it anywhere free as of now sadly but I would like to own it barricade themselves in a mall with some shady security guards and that were already there of course everyone's always fighting for supplies and or replenishing their supplies so they're only gonna last so long until you have to go somewhere else to get more supplies so as time goes on and people, only certain people are willing to go and get supplies, the ones that are, may not always survive. Well, they have to end up leaving this area to go to another area where there was someone else across from them that was trying to communicate with them. By the time they get there, some things happen and it jeopardizes their situation. And once again, the shit is the fan. It is thrilling from beginning to end. It is a very good watch. If you haven't watched it, that is my number three. You guys should check it out. It is a very good zombie movie. On to movie number two, which is a newer movie, and this is World War Z. I love this movie because the, the zombies are so incredibly fast. It's scary fast. Like, I feel like almost everyone in the world would be infected in a matter of like minutes, seconds, minutes, <laughs> because they are so fast in this movie. It's unreal. I feel like they would only be this fast until the point of where their bodies start rotting so much that you would not have the proper ligaments and muscle and, you know, the function of the actual brain function to send the signals through your body to keep going. In the beginning, they're extremely superhuman fast. The main character in this is a former UN investigator. His name is Gary or Jerry, something like that. I believe it starts with G or G or J, something like that. His family gets stuck in this gridlock. Not an or ordinary traffic jam 
to say the least. It's chaos breaking loose and slowly you can hear screams, car alarms, crashings of like windows and everything going on. Like you know this shit is hitting the fan and it's getting closer and closer and closer to you and you're stuck in this traffic jam in your car. Saying in the beginning the zombies are super fast so this virus consumes like the majority of the population like straight from the get-go. They have many encounters with different people and Jerry or Gary, whichever <laughs> whichever way his name is pronounced, I, I forgot because I haven't seen it in a minute. And he has to lead this team of people that he has been, that he's accumulated with to search for a cure. You don't necessarily find a cure right off the bat, but they find something that subsides the infection. And it was quite interesting to see how they portrayed this in the movie because a lot of these zombie movies sometimes don't really make sense towards the towards the middle end or sometimes the beginning they don't have any uh, explanation of like where it came from or what it stems from like is it a parasite did it manifest from something you ate like I always think it's gonna be like some sort of like parasite or something like that it's because it, it just happens so fast you know they find something that slows it down and it gives them time to find a vaccine, but it's, they also have to infect themselves with something else that's not so nice to infect yourself with. I'm not gonna spoil it, because I want you guys to see it, because the twist at the end was very, very good. So check out World War Z, that will not disappoint. It's a fucking fantastic movie. We are moving on to number one. And number one is a Korean zombie movie that has a very interesting twist on how it starts out, how the whole movie is played out. As a matter of fact, the whole movie is played out on a train. Everyone gets infected on a train. There is a group of survivors that happen to be on this train. Like, it was the craziest shit. <laughs> the whole thing was like so intense the whole time because there's such limited space on a train and try to keep yourself from getting infected on the train. And there's people trying to sabotage them the whole time as they're like trying to find like a safe compartment on this train until they got to their destination, which was not even a safe zone at the end. It was, that, it was really sad. They tried so hard. The main character, I believe his name is Siuk Woo, Siuk Woo, something like that. I'm not, no, I can't speak Korean really good. I'm, I'm trying though. Sorry if I uh, butchered a name. He's trying to spend his daughter's birthday with her. Uh, he is divorced, but he, is, he has picked up his daughter. They're on a train. They're going to Busan. This is called Train to Busan. This is the name of the movie. So everyone becomes trapped on this train, obviously, because once it's already going in motion, you can't really stop and you can't really get to the conductor either. Slowly have to make their way through each compartment to try and get to a safe compartment where no one is infected yet. And the whole movie is very suspenseful as they try to fight their way through and there's like hordes and hordes of super fast zombies, like they're superhuman speed fast zombies in this movie and they're on a tiny train that is trying to bullet straight through Busan, straight to Busan. So it is very like edge of your seat roller coaster ride the whole way through. It, it was an amazing movie. I love this movie so much. So they eventually end up getting to Busan once they finally find this safe compartment which people were fighting to force other passengers that were not infected yet out of their compartment just because they were operating out of fear. They were so afraid of being infected. They did not care if you were bit. If you had the slightest amount of blood on you, you weren't getting in. They were purposely trying to keep you out, which was really screwed up. I get the point of where you're so scared that you're fearing for your life. That's stick, but that's not going to help anybody in the end because once you're by yourself, some people aren't good at being by themselves in that sense, but you know, they say you benefit in numbers and sometimes you don't. It depends on the situation, I think. That's my personal belief. But they were forcing people that weren't infected out of the apartment. And 
that was basically making or breaking their survival in general. They finally make it to Busan, that said, and they get off, they go through the, the waiting area that you would normally go through when you're trying to get on, when you're trying to board the train, and turns out all the military personnel were infected there, and they were hoarded up in an area just kind of, you know, leisurely doing their thing until they heard all these people get off this train, and they just went into a rage and so everyone had to run back onto the train people were getting taken out left and right and eventually with a lot of people dying they make it to this point of train hopping because the train eventually you know it ran out of steam they, they couldn't do much more with it they get off they find another train some people die some the heartstrings get pulled on because her, the dad, the main character, had a problem when he was transferring the trains. The daughter ended up having to go with someone else to venture to a safe zone. I'm gonna let you guys watch this epic adventure unfold because it is so amazing. I love this movie. I can watch this movie like over and over and over again. It's so good. It's so intriguing to my senses because the survival instincts of these people were where they should be honestly when i watch movies and i'm like jesus christ i fucking hope people aren't like that in real life or i'm like you better just wipe us all out now because people are fucking dumb i can't i just fucking can't i need your survival instincts to kick in dude i mean i know it's one thing to say it and then have to do it but i would hope that most people would actually fight for their fucking life you know like do, how much do you value your life fucking show me like it's crazy in this movie they show you they value their fucking life i love this movie because they were fighters and i really respect that in somebody that is it guys that is my top five for my zombie movies i hope you enjoyed this video i wanted to do something more fun and hopefully you know it's fun for you guys to, to watch these. I hope you like zombie movies too. I love zombie movies. I love them so much. I've watched so many and there's so many more to watch. Until next time, I will see all you lovely little burritos later.